Ready? All right, with the hour being after seven, full board. We'll start the meeting March 21st. First item will be minutes from February 15th. Make a motion to approve. Do we have any questions, comments? Second. Uh, Jack, I may just want to add a little bit something, which I'll send to Kate, if that's all right. What are you adding? Um, just a little more detail on some of the conversation in regard to the, um, the 241 project. 241, uh, <coughs> like me, what's 241 missing? Report. Just a couple of things. Did, did you already you send it to me? I did not. Okay. No, but I will. It's what you said? What yes, said. yeah. All right, so we'll get them on hold. All right. Thank you. All right, we'll bang out a couple of these. Ironwood, they want extension. Watson Soul is requesting extension of time through May 6, 2026 for the site plan <coughs> and endorsed on May 5, 2022 due to the fact that the delays with Eversource and the Massachusetts DP use interconnection process. So we're looking through up until May of 2026. I'll ask for extension. Doesn't mean they can't. Things go quicker, they can go quicker. So. Motion to approve. Second for discussion. Second. Second. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Abstain. What's the date, Jeff, please? Five. Five. May 5. May 5. Okay. 2026. Okay. <coughs> All right, we'll start the first article, 705, IBZ zoning article. We have a 705 inclusionary hearing and court pursuing the Mass General Laws 48 Section 5, the Wapple Planning Board hold a public hearing on May 21st at 7.05 p.m. in the main meeting room. Uh, the purpose uh, to provide interested parties to comment on the proposed amendment to the Wapple Zoning Bylaws, which was submitted to the spring annual town meeting of 2024. It says amend Section 5 use regulations for the creation of a subsection. 5-J inclusionary housing requirement or do anything to act in there too. Copy the text and the amendments. It's on file with the clerk and at the planning board office. So with that being said, we have the hearing open and we at the request of the selectmen are the sponsors, but we also have the public hearing and this was done by Patrick. If you want to explain um, what it's doing and what it's not doing, I guess. So, as many members of the board remember, back in I want to say 2020, uh, there was an article at the Fall Town meeting to do an inclusionary zoning bylaw with an, a, an affordable housing trust that did not end up going forward. Um, or should I rather say it was a, it was a it did not receive the. the um, the required number of votes to pass a two-thirds uh, majority. So that following spring, a steering committee of planning board, zoning board, and housing trust members met to, uh, to kind of look at the bylaw, see what corrections could be made to address the concerns that were brought up by, um, you know, by it was brought up at town meeting. So essentially what is changed with this one is there's no connection at all with subdivision control so it's, it's primarily dealing with multifamily or condo complex so the subdivision control aspect is removed um, there's no longer a housing trust 
which was a portion of the previous bylaw. And this bylaw in particular is more or less a requirement rather than an opt-in um, special permit as the previous bylaw was. So this is more straightforward. Um, there's no provision for a payment in lieu like the other bylaw. It's, it's primarily just a development of six or more units must provide a certain amount of affordable um, either on-site or off-site. Um, that language and most of the language of the bylaw is, is, is looking at neighboring towns and we looked at the town of Mansfield that had a similar bylaw as kind of the um, the framework of this one so I'm happy to answer any questions or comments okay um, <clears throat> if I understand on the section four here it's for every the seventh unit has to be affordable correct yeah, so the sixth unit is the triggering for threshold, and then it's every seventh unit thereafter. So basically, this could only happen where multifamily is allowed, correct? Primarily, yeah. Prim well, primarily. Co condos could be. What? A condo complex could technically be included. Um, but but those aren't. Al those are, yeah, but those are, condo complexes still saying. come under. Yeah. It has to be a multifamily, which is GI. Correct. Okay. Yep. My next question, Patrick, only because I couldn't figure it out. Can you explain on the last page percentage of market rate units? I can't. What's that telling me? I can't. Wh which section? The is chat. That? Last page. Seven. Yeah. Is that section, uh, section eight or seven. nine? Seven? seven. Okay. So the timing of construction. So essentially. Um, when, when a development is created, you, you don't want to have a situation where market rate is uh, constructed uh, okay. beforehand. So you want to be sure to uh, to have that kind of scaled properly. So you have affordable being built at the same time as market rate. All right. Okay. As soon as you said that, because I went from timing and I'm saying, where is this coming from? But I, it reverts back to it. Okay. That's yep. all I have for questions. Um, let's start with John. Do you have any questions, comments? That what was it one was it one time provision for off-site uh, uh, affordable ones being built off-site is that still in here or is that yeah so that is one of the options so either constructing the affordable units on-site or off-site is the um, is the other option for developer. Reiterate my objection to the inclusion of the, the allowance for off site affordable units. Okay. I believe that if they're building affordable units, they should be on the site of the development, not segregated somewhere else as segregated units, really. Um, That would be my only comment. Okay. Go. First, I just want to say I, I support this uh, this article, this bylaw change, um, according to the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Uh, Massachusetts has a shortfall of over 200,000 units uh, that we need to build by 20, 2030. Uh, we have only been building half the units that we need. Uh, so anything we can do to, to encourage more units, which are the affordable units, would be, I think, beneficial. Obviously, this is not going to make a huge impact, but everything, every little thing we do can is going to help. So I think this is a very simple thing to do. Um, there are some studies out there um, by the Harvard Kennedy School and also one by the uh, Grounded Solutions Network on inclusionary housing in, in the United States. And, and I think the conclusion about those studies is that, that the inclusionary zoning does work. Um, 
off. So I just want to, I just had a couple questions, Patrick. Yep. One is still, so there's no longer incentives. Uh, this is you're straight, you're just straight. No, so be <coughs> this is more or less a requirement rather than an opt-in. And that seemed to be, when we had our steering committee meeting a few years ago, that was more kind of the message I was getting from that is didn't want to have the option for people to have a payment in lieu. Um, the concern was if we're going to provide affordable housing, then it should be a requirement for a multifamily. And then we did, I did see your, the letter from town council. Mm -hmm. So are you recommending then in this the new uh, memo you sent out that we adopt those changes? The, the, uh, yeah, I mean, that would be my recommendation. The, the, the comments from town council um, were essentially recommending removing two of the definitions that were listed, adding one, and then some correction to where the table was. So you could either move the table um, to below 7B, or you can make an alteration to a few of the words within um, 7A. So they were, they're fairly minor, but I think it was more or less to uh, help improve, help strengthen the bylaw. Yeah, no, so I support it. I just want to uh, say regretfully I'm not going to be at town meeting because I have a family event out of state that unfortunately I need to be at a one, one a lifetime thing so I won't be at town meeting but I do support this article and I hope it passes. Thank you. Good. Catherine? No, I think it's much more straightforward than last time around. I'm glad that fund is gone and um, the only question I had was on the planning board um, implementation section. Yep. It, section six. So I feel this is pretty straightforward. It's not. It's not like opinion based. Like we won't be tweaking it much. But that first paragraph makes it sound like we could. Can you just expand on that a little bit? So it provides the planning board with the option of essentially establishing their own rules and regulations for how they would handle a, um, a, an affordability um, project or a project that has a multifamily development and has that affordability restriction. It's um, so the maximum price. Sorry, I'm just reading it one more time. Yeah, so there is a little more discretion to the planning board in terms of how that process is set up. A lot of it is kind of dictated by the reference further on to Mass General Law, Chapter 184, Section 32. That's more or less the risk how an affordability restriction is established with the state. So it's not, you couldn't veer too far off of that's that. It, that's yeah. what I was getting at. So if, if it's regulated by law, mm -hmm. there isn't a lot of discretion. No, no, there wouldn't be. Okay, thank you. Paul? Patrick, is this an addition to or revision of, of, a, of existing law? Uh, I guess this would be a, a new law for is the it, town. And it, so it's a, it's a new law yeah. with all the others that have, have been written? Or do we not even, does the town of Waffle have anything? So we don't have a, an inclusionary zoning bylaw townwide. There is an affordability component with each qualified villages. Um, but this, I guess, would be its own separate thing for okay. town-wide. Patrick, do you know off the top of your head how many, how, what, what's the deficit in the town of Walpole now? Of in terms of affordable yeah. units? Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. right now, because of the, kind of the history with this, the Summer okay. Street project, it's around seven, a little bit under eight, actually, um, when the units for the Summer Street project, which is a whole different situation when a building permit is pulled for those those units would go back on the inventory um, and there's also a, the project at, at Gilmore's which has um, uh, because the 55 Summer Street project and the Gilmore's project are all rental all of those units would count towards our affordable our, our subsidized housing numbers so even though there's only a 20 only 25 percent are actually affordable due to the, the state's guidelines you count the whole project um, those projects would put the town over 10% once they're once they are recorded, but currently you're a little under 8% right now. We have to get to 10. Yeah. 10. That's the okay. That's the goal. Okay. 
So this just basically accelerates. So even if it, those don't get recorded, or the, this accelerates the the, re, uh, the the ability for somebody to buy a parcel of land, put a multi, and and allow for affordable. Yeah, the, the reason towns would do like an inclusionary zoning bylaw. In addition, if you know, say the town is at ten percent, having something like this. As the town grows, you still are increasing that denominator of your total housing units. So a your subsidized housing inventory, that 10% number, that gets changed based upon um, the census. So say the 2030 census comes around and you know we're just at 10% and we haven't done anything to also keep up with the affordability, you risk be dropping below 10%. So in inclusionary zoning bylaws, it just just it's an incremental way to try to keep that number your your affordability percentage where it is and where does the con where does the control lie in terms of is it the builder that can state the affordability act like every seventh unit I want to be affordable or is it the plan I'm just trying to understand yeah that. no that's uh, that's a good question so in this discretion it, it would go through uh, through the planning board but when they record it they have to record it with uh, DHCD, which is the Department of Housing and Community Development. So they are the one that makes sure that however it is constructed, it is done according to their rules and regulations. So they would have to state that in their plans. Basically. Yeah, they would need to follow the state's guidelines and how they set it up. So all everything like that is it's more or less out of the town's control. It's a state. Right. So they would matter. present that to us, and and we would have the right to say nay or yay. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, thank you. Yep. Jack, no more questions. Okay. Um, quick one. Yep. Because these are not under 40B, we only get one for one, meaning the seventh unit only counts as one. If you're in an apartment complex, you wouldn't get the whole deal. Is that correct? Correct. Because All it's right, so it's, if you have 100 units, you might get six out of them or whatever. The, you're not going to get credit for the whole 100. Correct. Okay. Um, my suggestion is town council. I, typically don't like doing that the way I've always done it is I get them to give us here you go tell us what's wrong we get it then we put it up and go this seemed to once again doing this a long time somebody just doesn't get it but since I really my suggestion is you got you say it's not much it doesn't appear to be much what I would do Patrick is I'd let let this be play out a town meeting and let okay. town council if it's deemed you need it let them explain it to everybody so everybody understands rather than us doing it uh, so that you know if everybody thinks it's fine that's great you do it there just don't want to overstep or yeah. screw something up before you get to the finish line so to speak so my suggestion is we'll just let it this will be discussed at town meeting okay absolutely Okay. Uh, any questions, comments from the public regarding oh, this? One quick question, Jack. Yep. But we can make a motion to make uh, Patrick's suggested changes that came from town council be the in the the article no. now. No, that's why I just said no. We're not going to do that. We do that. We've already committed this thing to go that way, as opposed to we'll wait and let town council decide. So it, it's the board's discretion. You, you it, if you want to but accept I, the changes now, you could, but. As you mentioned, Jack, you can let it go to town meeting and see how and it lands there. Let them decide yeah. because if we do it, we could mess the whole thing up. I agree. Well, we, well, we, we I think as, as Patrick yeah, asked town council to weigh in on whether we could make minor changes, and they they ruled that it's within the purview of the planning board at, at the hearing to make those kind of changes, as long as it doesn't change the the substance. Yeah, I've been down that road before, and uh, you know, I mean, I'm, town council doesn't understand. They understand all the days and this and that. I just have an issue. What, you just wait to it and let that town council in front of all 150 members explain it so that everybody gets a comfort level. Then let the town meeting have the comfort level. We ain't stopping anything. You're just waiting for that at that point. That's my recommendation. Uh, yeah, the only reason I would, would go the other direction, Jack, is because it, we, we know there are some questions about it. some of the texts, um, and this would immediately well, remove that from the, as being a, a, a question. Well, we don't have town council here to explain why, so that's so, that's why I'm not going hey, Patrick, with it. If I may Which ask version the is yes. on town warrant now? The marked up, that's what highlighted version, or the no, the one, the one that's listed with your uh, the original. Yeah, the one that you sponsored. Okay. So, based yeah. on that, having been a town meeting so long, I have to say I agree. If you stand up with a different version, people start thinking something funny's going on. Yeah. I would 
suggest you go with we go with this one and at town meeting he announces that town council made some corrections and let town council say their two second blurb and that way it will come across more legitimate that's my version that's my opinion so is that uh miss baby so like a substitute motion yeah you can do that, that way yeah all right we could even help you with that yep. do you know what i mean it's yep. just i think it looks more legitimate whereas people seem to think something funny's going on when it's printed one way in the warrant and something else is before them oh always yeah yep all right uh has it been printed in the warrant yeah well, no the warrant has been has not been printed yet yeah no but oh, yeah. it doesn't matter this is what was given to us for the selectmen that we put on so that's supposed they can't change the warrant even if we change it tonight the warrant has to go the way it was published and advertised this, this is a public hearing this isn't the time to change the things so well, I, I do i mean i don't want to prolong the discussion but certainly the reason for public hearings is to hear suggestions of why we might change it if yeah but not to ch yeah but, but not to change it that's a suggestion but not to change you either vote it up or you vote it down that's all you either vote we like it or we don't but you don't start tick tinkering with an article at this point it's a public hearing on the article that's why this should be done well in advance before it even gets to the selectmen to be advertised or once they accept it so. I, I guess i would go the other route Jack. Well, Phil, doing this long time, yep. and it's it, it's why I, when it's in my hands, it gets done the right way. When it's like this, it goes off, and it's exactly what Kate said. People go, to, "What's who's on first? What's on second? So it's not going to actually. I think will make it simpler and go quicker, or everybody understands. But I have a couple of comments. We want one for the Board of Health. And that they March 19th. They voted unanimously. They have no concerns with the proposed amendment. Water and sewer. On March 15th, the commission has the following comments. Read and noted, no comments. So I guess a read and noted is a comment. <laughs> hmm. um, wait a minute. Oh, oh, that's for Norfolk Street, sorry. Okay, so those are the only two we have. So anyone else, any member of the audience, public want to come up and say something? If you do, come on up, come on up. <coughs> Hi, uh, Robert Damage, Precinct 7. Uh, with what's coming on board, probably at the town meeting with the MBTA inclusion, uh, MBTA zoning. What I heard at that meeting, a meeting was that we're going to a big bonus of if we accept the MBTA zoning, is that it will give us the opportunity to get up to the 25 percent of existing units in affordability, and thus, thus get 25 uh, percent of new units would be affordable. That's putting us over 10 percent. So I guess what I'm under, I want to ask here is. Do we even need this? And, and what's, what's the difference? Like, what, is, what are they looking to do here that the MBTA is not going to do? Well, you, okay, first off, you, you're assuming that's going to pass. Yes. So you, you take one at a time. So. But, but Jack, aren't we voting on both the same night? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a town meeting member, yeah. so. I, I mean, we as uh, the body. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but you got to, this was put in first, so um, I don't know. My guess would be why if you were to, why would you go this route when you go the MBTA route? Yeah. So it's, it's this may just be or. in the draw getting dust, meaning that going the other route if the MBTA passes, that's a better deal. Yeah, money making. But it was this also a chance to put more homes like in Northern Walpole like away this, from that half a mile area? No, this is if you're going to go for a unit, it's a general residence unit because you're going to put more than one house household individual on gr so you still got to get a special permit you go down anything in east walpole if you're going to build a condo complex or whatever say down east walpole you can only build it in the gr this doesn't this isn't like the other one where you could build it anywhere okay so on the mbta um law not to go into it too much but uh, an affordability requirement is optional. Towns don't need to have an affordability requirement within their zoning. Not to jump ahead, but the one that Walpole is proposing has a 10% affordability requirement. So it's a separate, it has its separate affordability requirement, and that's that's dictated by the state. You can't go above 10% for your MBTA zoning. 
um, unless you do an economic feasibility feasibility analysis. So this IZB bylaw is townwide, whereas the MBTA bylaw would be restricted to only what's in that district. Okay. All right. Any, any other questions, comments from the audience? Okay. Yes, yeah. Phil. I just, I just want to say that I, I think that the reason for doing this is because we need more affordable housing. I've had many people ask me why are there no affordable units in the two large apartment buildings downtown Walpole, and, and that's because we didn't have an inclusionary zoning at that time. So, so doing both the MBTA law and the inclusionary zoning is good. They both serve the uh, purposes of getting more housing, and inclusionary zoning, as Patrick said, also gives you affordable housing, which we desperately need in eastern Massachusetts. So I, I, that's why I would support both. <coughs> Okay. Any other? Everybody all set? I'll make a motion to not into what do we usually do, Kate? Recommend. Favorable action. Favorable action on this article. Do I have a second? second? Do I have a second for John? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Done, done. Bye, Patrick. Patrick, you can leave. <laughs> go, go. Unless you want to stay. It's no overtime. <laughs> Next one. Put, 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 put. Here we go. The hour being after 706 and 707, we have a continued public hearing for 2401 site plan and 2402 special permit for 241 Norfolk Street. So that and away we go. And let's okay, Mr. American, you want to explain what's up? And if you would, and if you give this to Katie. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Dan Merrick, one legacy engineer in here on behalf of the applicant. When we met last, we were in the process of making the revisions to address comments by the town engineer and various other departments and your comments, and we submitted a revision several weeks ago. Um, and we, since then, um, the Conservation Commission has approved the project and issued a land service permit and an order of conditions. And to my knowledge, we've addressed all of the outstanding questions and comments from town departments. There weren't a lot of changes. It was a lot of nitty-gritty stuff. The only notable things are, as this board suggested, we, we added an alternate potential location for a handicap space with a notation that the building inspector would determine which, which location would be the preferred, the preferred location. We also changed the grading around the back of the building so that these egress doors are at grade so that people coming out those could walk over here to this little driveway area. Uh, and uh, thirdly, and lastly, uh, as we mentioned, I think the last meeting, the town engineer asked that, and the conservation commission asked that we make some improvements to a drain system here that carries town runoff from West Street. And we've incorporated that in the plan where we're going to convert an existing catch base into a manhole, add a new catch base, and replace the pipeline down here, and then replace the section of the pipeline here. And then the plans require that the applicant convey an easement to the town uh, over this pipeline because it currently does not exist in an easement. So it's just a pipe that carries town runoff, not in an easement. So we thought it would be prudent to kind of clean that up. And that's about it. Okay, I'll read some of the stuff we got. Uh, as you just said, from conservation, the board secretary, they got a, they got a land disturbance permit for 2, 241 North Park Street. Uh, board of Health voted unanimously to reiterate their comments from the January 16th Board of Health meeting, which state you're not, they're not in favor of construction within the wetlands, and if the project is approved, they want to adopt the best practices for mosquito mitigation and work with Norfolk Mosquito Control, institute regular cleaning of gutters, provide proper grading in order to prevent low spots that hold water, and also reminds the, the applicant uh, that you store or manage hazardous waste more than 50 gallons of volume or 25 pounds of drive weight, you've got to register with them. Okay. But Upper Police Department, uh, Officer Luke Pollan, February 19th, Wapo Police would ask the site. The Wapo Police would ask that the sight line appropriate for the vehicles exiting this site onto West Street. This is a heavy traveled road with commuters and tractor trailers. Okay. Uh, 
okay so he said that he doesn't see any impact but he's I can't I'm not gonna speak whether he meant that it has sight line so why don't you the sight distances are indicated on the plan here in this case on Okay. And on West Street, you can clear, you can see to the intersection and beyond, and in the other direction, you can see 350 feet. Clark and West. What's the minimum? Sight lines are pretty good there. Well, um, what's the minimum? It depends on which road you're talking about. So for this road here, I think the minimum is probably around 300, 350, because people could be cruising down Norfolk Street at West Street, you're coming to a stop. So the travel speeds are really slow. So the the required distances would be probably under 200 feet. Okay, so you've exceeded anything you'd need. You agree, Carl? Okay. Yes. Uh, from the fire department, uh, Alan Hover, Deputy Chief, says the applicant has addressed all site plan comments. So good to go there. Sewer and water, same thing again. They have no comments. And uh, it's the Board of Health, another one. And Carl, so you're the last one I got. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Along with the revised plans, Mr. American delivered a letter February 26, 2024, uh, summarizing the plan change. We reviewed the letter. Um, we reviewed the plans, and on March 12th, we issued a, a memorandum to the planning board, um, actually maybe earlier than March 12th, uh, saying that we had uh, no, there were no further issues to address. Um, a product, I will note that there was a minor change, and Mr. American has suggested a special condition um, to address some concerns about the size of the riprap on the plans. Um, that will be squared away on the endorsement plans. It's basically to, to uniform, uh, provide uniform sized riprap. There are a couple of different details suggesting different sizes. Anyway, that would be the only special condition um, that I'm aware of. Okay, so. Let me write down what was the special condition so we get it. It's in the draft you have. I have it. Oh. You will have. Maybe take didn't take one I'll take one. Oh take one. <coughs> you didn't say that. Take one. Thank you. Take, take one. one of these. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> no. You got any questions, comments? Still? Not at this time, Chair. Oh. Okay, if we vote for it, it's time's <laughs> over. Right, I didn't know that. No, it's, it's pretty cut and dry. Okay. Um, Catherine? It's good to go. Good to go. Is that an official statement? Okay. I have a question. Yeah, coming up to you, John. I'm going to get Phil next. You got any questions, I'll comments? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I thank you for making all the changes. I think the time looks good. Okay, now, John. Um, my question's on the lighting. Is the perp I, I know the main purpose is not to have it go over the lot lines into neighboring lots, but is part of the purpose to provide lighting for the parking? That's a general question. We provide lighting that we, we think is reasonable given the particular use. And this is a commercial use that's not really going to be visited by the public at large. Right. So we have a wall path proposed on basically these sides of the building just to provide some basic illumination of this <coughs> driveway parking area. In, other, in another type of project, we might provide a different proposed lighting scheme that might be more intensive, say, for a retail activity where the public might be visiting the site. For something like this, we try to keep it to a minimum. So these are uh, wall packs that are full cutoff fixtures, dark sky fixtures facing directly down. Okay. That's basically the only other thing I had. Thank you for the back pathway. <laughs> I have nothing. Anyone from the audience have any questions, comments relative to 241 Norfolk Street? Okay, being none. All right, I'll make a motion to close the special permit case. Second. Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Make a motion to close the site plan. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. This is showing going up. I'll make a motion to approve special permit decision case 2402. Second. 
And we have no, under the standard conditions, we have no special conditions. So we have a second and Kate. There's one special condition. No, that's under the site for the riprap. There's one also on the uh, there is? purpose cover special condition. I missed it. That way, going a little bit into the other one. From the standard. Uh, standards outlined in the bylaw. It's about the fill not being contaminated. I don't see that there. Second page, Jeff. Oh, conditions of approval, not oh, that any fill on the site shall contain no solid waste. Yeah, that's a condition of it. I'm sorry. I guess it's the same thing as special. Yeah, you don't have any standard conditions, but that permit stuff okay. that's just in as a condition. All right, everybody understand, yeah, which makes sense. Okay. Uh, we have a motion second by Kate. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Now on to the site plan. Make a motion to approve the site plan with only one special condition, which is number listed as number 32, that prior to the endorsement, I'll uh, be revised to specify 18-inch riprap aprons at all stormwater discharge. Second. We have a second. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Thank done. you for your time. Done, done. Thank you, Dan. My bad. item is Lincoln Estates it's subdivision remand and I'll read the notice is it says a meeting will be held public meeting on March 21st 710 a remand application from Walsh Brothers 11th Saddle Way having submitted the definitive subdivision plan uh, the property is located on the east side of Lincoln Road and off of the end of Deerfield the land consists of 20.8 acres on undeveloped woodland Shown on assessor's map 38, parcels 23, 24, rural district. The property is recorded in Norfolk Registry of Deeds. The owners of the property are John Hassenager and Philip Lasivita, who is the representative of the estate of Walter Lasivita. And this is a single family residential subdivision with the latest date of January 1st, 2024 by GLM Engineering. So with that being said, it is open. Green cards are all set? Okay. All right. So, so everybody understands. This was denied a couple years ago. Went to court. And it's now back in our lap by the judge. And what it is is this is going to be a regular public hearing. And you can, just like it's brand new, you're not restricted on what your questions or comments are. Our biggest item we had was the uh, grading of the road, which was um, it's getting to way too flat that we wanted it raised up so the num number of cubic yards being removed for the road would be more in line with uh, with a lessen the impact of it so basically that's the only thing we've agreed to from the planning board perspective uh, we have we had our own um, what do you call it engineer uh, gem associates do it for us he's in the audience and our town council's here too so with all that being said this is as far as everybody's here, it's like it is a whole new submission, and you're welcome to have any questions or comments on that. So, with that being said, turn it over to the Walsh team. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Uh, Brian Almeida for the applicant, along with uh, Rob Truex of GLM Engineering and uh, John Walsh. It's uh, good to see you all again, and for the new faces, it's uh, good to meet you. Uh, at the outset, I just wanted to uh, thank the board and uh, town council, and also uh, Mr. Gemma. Uh, for the the legwork, the collaborative work that was done to get the plan in a place that it could be uh, remanded here by a unanimous vote. Um, and beyond that, uh, I'll stand here at the pleasure of the board. All right, so we're going to have a presentation. Uh, Mr. Truax can present the plan if you'd like, Mr. Chair. Oh, it, we're going to run it just like a regular one, so there's no shortcuts. It's like we never heard this before, okay? so. That's how I expect this to be run. So, 
Mr. Truax, you can do your thing as you always do. Uh, good evening. For the record, Rob Truax, GLM Engineering Consultants. So this is a, I guess we're going to call it a definitive subdivision. As, a, as the attorney said, it was a remand back. So it's a 24 lot single family residential subdivision. Um, it's the same project that was displayed before you that was denied by this board some time ago. I'm just going to go with what the chairman said a couple years probably. And now we've been remanded back and the plan has substantially not changed from what was previously before you. The only significant change was the road profiles as we all had discussed and agreed to and to raise the roads to lessen the amount of gravel removal from the site. The road still comes in off Lincoln Road. Um, it's a cul-de-sac that heads straight in. We call that Avra. And then it comes off Daisy Drive, which connects, I'm sorry, Deerfield, not Daisy. Deerfield Drive, which connects up to Parsons Way, as you can see on the plan. There's still significant grading on the site. Um, there's gonna be some this is a profile of the road that comes in that we call Avery Lane off of Lincoln. So just to give you a quick overview of what's changed, the, the road in the yellow, the profile seen in the yellow is the new profile, and the orange, which is below that, is the old profile. You can see the significant change in the rays of that profile from the new to the old, and that is this roadway section right through here. And, you're seeing that change. and then the other which is Parsons Way. This is coming up that profile you just saw. This is the new profile coming up. And then this is the old profile. And that's this section of roadway right through here. And as we discussed before, we've already maximized the slope coming up from the existing cul de sac at Deerfield. That bit maxed out at the 7%. And then that comes up in the crossing in this vicinity. To the proposed road in the drive. Um, you know, it's town water. I did go before the water and sewer board last week. They asked me to come in and show them the changes to the plan. I believe they sent a letter to the board. They had no issues with the plan. I just wanted to be sure that we were continuing on with the looping of the water line from Deerfield out to Lincoln Road, which we are. Uh, we still have the water line loop throughout the site. The site is serviced by on-site sewage disposal systems. There's no town sewer in this part of town. So it will just have town water, electric, um, possibly gas throughout if that's still something we're putting in new projects as we go forward with the new regulations for building houses that could change. So I think that's just a quick overview. Did you see comments today from the town engineer? I'm sure you have them in your file in front of you. I just received them. Had a quick chance to look them over. Didn't really see anything substantive there. See if he can speak for himself. He got the comments. I think that's it. I really don't have much more to add. Yet. Yet. Oh, well, I'm looking for the comments. I want to explain to anybody in the audience they don't understand uh, vertical and horizontal scales because that scares people what do you mean in what sense I have never liked cuts and fills vertically it's one scale horizontally it's another if you look at it, it looks like a mountain do you, do you, do you see what I'm saying Rob oh I see what you're saying if you so want to explain to people what it really means it's well it's still a significant cut huh? yeah I understand that but it's when you see this like on any profile it just makes Correct. people a little concerned that's all Hard to explain that to people, I guess. I mean, well, tell them what's the what's horizontal scale? Forty. Forty is horizontal, and four one inch equals four feet is the vertical. So it's so, it's right. ten times. Correct. Okay. So just so, so it does understand. look a little deceiving in that sense. That's 
when you call them up, I just want to make sure everybody understood. So, let's start with the fire department uh, from Alan Hoover. And he said the access road plans must include analysis, evaluation of fire maneuvers, and the access minimum turn rate should be 25 feet. The opposite travel lane is prohibited. Uh, the required width of the fire apparatus access road should not be instruct, obstructed. And the file hydrant layout on page 11 is acceptable. So if I'm reading this, is you still haven't done anything with the fire department? I thought we did before. I, don't, I mean, we have 26 foot ride roads and we meet all the requirements for a fire apparatus okay, to get well, on I'm the site. I'm not Stop. sure what that means. Before? What do you mean? Like last month or? Previous plan. They're gone. This is a whole new submission. Right? Codes who could have changed since that time. A lot of things could have changed, right? Could have. So now you, you, everything has to go back to everybody's from day, great state, yeah, day one. This, the other plan doesn't exist anymore. As far as you have to go back and see everybody, okay? All right. Uh, Sue and Water, John Hasenegger, Chairman, and he says they don't have any issues with this plan. Okay. Uh, moving on. Oh, that's a, another one of the same one. I got cows, which you have, and. I don't. You know, I don't have Kate. I'll ask you. I don't see Board of Health. Uh, they responded yet. I don't. That's why I'm asking. I don't see them in here. No, oh, don't have them. Oh, hold on. You sent them to. Okay. Yeah, you sent them out to Board of Health, Bill Inspector, Conservation, Economic, Engineering, Fire, Police, Sewer and Water, Tree Warden. So what we got to date is Sewer and Water, Fire, and what's the other one I read? And Cow, naturally. So. What? I guess That's all we got. So. I don't know why they haven't re responded, but those will have to be forthcoming. As we know, key is for health, right? You guys met with them yet? Do you plan to, or? We don't generally go to their meeting. Right. They usually vote it. Okay. Just asking. Um, so, all right. Kyle, if you want to do yours. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I delivered a letter to the board dated February 29, 2024, um, three pages. Um, the first couple of comments deal with showing items that are in the layout plans or on the land plans on the cover sheet. Uh, that's a presentation and a clarity thing. I want uh, an access easement or the extension of the row of Ava Drive to be shown on the cover sheet as well as a 15-foot private drain easement um, on the layout sheet. I'd like the 15-foot drain easement labeled uh, as private. Um, and then I continue to maintain, and this is from, this is a continuation from the last review, but it's applicable to the currently submitted plans, that if Ava Drive is, ex is, is going to extend to the Sportsman's Club property, that it be a continuation of Ava Drive, whether it's constructed or not constructed, and I'm not quite sure what the resolution of that is. On the current plans, it's not shown as constructed, but I still would like it to be a piece of layout along with the um, easements that go with it. Uh, and then I comment on the location of the group mailbox. It's a little too close to Lincoln Road. I want it moved back so that vehicles won't be stopping um, close to Lincoln Road as they pull off. Um, <clears throat> I'd also like the covenant approval block to the lower right hand plan of the uh, to the left of the planning board endorsement block on sheet two um, on sheet 10 the grading drainage and utilities I note that there appears to be some incomplete grading on the lot 11 to 15 um, lot line to elevation 208 um, sheet 14 and this is a result of the revisions 
All right, the water line looks like it stayed down at the depth that it was at on the first plant, so it's 10 or so feet deep. It should be five. Um, that's an easy switch to make. However, when you move the water line up to its proper um, coverage, um, we point out that there's um, potentially some conflicts with the drainage, and there's plenty of room to drop the drainage if we need to. Those are fairly easy to solve. Um, on sheet 21, the details, I note that there's been a change. Um, Eversource no longer provides light, pole bases, light poles and bases and luminaires. Um, I have their detail. I've provided that, and I've asked that it be added to the plan that available will have to provide those. Um, the final comment is on stormwater, and I note that um, don't think I have a stormwater report. Is that correct, Rob? You haven't, have you done one yet? Okay, so that's that comment. We need to take a look at it. Um, we, it was extensively reviewed the first time, but the change is actually, it's really the rationale areas for the catch basins and, and, and the pipe runs that we need to look at. Um, so anyway, those are fairly simple comments, Mr. Chair, um, but that's it. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll start with Whose turn is it? Paul's. I guess. I'm going up. Um, so, it, well, this, the, so the, the latest plan or this new plan is the, all the revisions that have happened, right? The different in elevation grades and the amount of soil being taken and stuff like this, right? I mean, we're not starting from the beginning. We've taken what we've learned from the previous and so forth, correct? No, it's a new plan. It's a new plan. But this is this new plan. The only change to this plan to the previous is the profile we raised the road, as agreed to. Okay. That was a change. So we still have the concerns of disturbance on Lincoln Road. Everything. Everything. Yeah, the only thing we agreed to was changing the grades. That was the right thing. So right. everything, everything else, else has changed on the plan. Yeah. I mean. And the, t and the time that it's going to take to take all yeah, that out. All that, that is all on the, the table. table. Yeah. Okay. Just so, could we g disagree with the grading? Yeah. Yeah. We could. Then you have some guy in a robe to come down and try to yeah. slap us. But mm -hmm. Well, my simple brain has to go here and just say, so all the comments that were made and all the concerns. Were all addressed previously. Previous. Okay. Were addressed previous. Correct. And they were all, were, are we all approved or all agreed? On what? No. Uh, we, did we agree with all the changes that they made? On previously? this plan here? Yeah. For the road? Yeah, the road, the amount, the time. Um, no, none of that's been submitted. All you got is the plan. Okay. So, all you, what now? And uh, and at some point, I can ask our consultant, Mr. Gemma, who's involved, if, if if it's reflected. I'll ask you now. If you want to come up and just answer this for Paul, Rob, if you would. Yeah. Could you repeat the question, Jack? Okay. Uh, Paul's trying to understand what's changed in the plan, and the only thing that's changed from the original plan uh, that we've agreed to in theory is the grading. The grading. Right. The grading that's shown on this plan is consistent with what we had kind of negotiated with your last, work. last year. The work so. that you did, because I remember your yep. work and stuff like this. But yep. the, the timetable and stuff like that? Well, those were, yeah, those were different issues that we didn't really... Um, Negotiate, I guess, is the is the best thing to say. Uh, one, uh, just one thing too that Rob didn't point out when he was um, presenting was they did move back the the limit of work on lot one so that all the trees on that lot aren't cleared. Is that that's correct, oh, that's right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, so that was done as well. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if you yep. will, um, I did take the plans, the last plan that was on the table in October of twenty one and the current plan sheet by sheet, note by note, and took a look at it. So what you know, what I noted, I agree with the summary, I agree with what Mr. Gemma said, um, but outside of that, the plans are identical. From the last, yeah, okay, but you gotta understand, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, right. The only thing that matters is we've, we've have a, a meeting of the minds as far as the grading. This is all brand new to everybody. So everything is on the table other, other than the grades. 
unless we find something so catastrophic or something that changes this, that's kind of over here, and we've kind of shook hands on that. So everything else, this is a whole brand new hearing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. it at least clarifies where yep. we're at. Thank so you. before we had um, gravel operations, right. we had, yep. so with the grades changing, I would think that would have already, that would have changed also. Um, so are you going to get us new, the gravel operations, the trucking, all of that? Well, the trucking plan and all that hasn't changed. I mean, the number, the amount of gravel has changed. It's reduced. Right, so the trucking number of trucks has to have changed if the amount of gravel changed um we were only looking at daily tr i don't think we ever put like how many trucks it was for the entire operation we did it was an op a daily operation wasn't it I we figured out that how long it was going to take how, how many trucks right. per day that we was on there. all of that so that obviously has changed and that was one of the we biggest can update that i think it's important because i think that was one of the biggest things we heard from the neighbors was they were concerned with that and the safety um so i do think we definitely we'll need, update that we for you. need that from you guys yep we'll no update question. that that's fine that's too. what i was trying to that's what i was trying to get all right but what yep. i want to i want to express to everybody i don't care what happened before you say well it's before if we don't update this it doesn't go on decision there's no enforcement what? understood okay. well everything that's in the file is still valid no no this is brand new not a new application. This is a new application. No, it's not. No, it's not. I disagree. Gee, I guess you and I got the same law degree. I guess we don't. No, there's nothing to be, this is a whole new plan. That's the way it was said to be done. The only difference is between that plan and you didn't have to pay the fee. Everything else is, you got to come back again and do it. This is, when this gets approved, well, the other one is doesn't come back. The other one is gone. It's failed. It's, it's gone. What do you mean? I disagree, but and our council does, so I'm I'm not going to make that argument. This we didn't file a new application. Yes, you did. I did not. You didn't file a new application. I did not. You didn't this is the same application. Yeah, but did you? Did you have? We're under a remand. We're not under a new application. We did not file a whole new project. But if you read what the remand says, we go through the same process. Same. We're having a public hearing. You're right. Yeah. But same we're not. process. It didn't say you don't have to do this, this, and this comes on. It did say we don't refile the application. But you did have to go out and get new signatures. No, we didn't. You sure did. I made you go. Be you came in with signatures of three years old, and a lot of stuff changed in that. Correct. So we didn't know if the property had been sold or whatever. You had to do that. You can't go buy something three years old. So if that's being said, it's up to, uh, now I'm going to get a little mad. It's up to us to go dig through our files to take all your stuff that you had before and say, oh, is this it? Is this it? Is this it? No. Ain't happening. You got to present it to us. Okay. If, if you don't, it's not part of this. Okay. So, Rob, one of the other things we discussed was the on-site versus the off-site. So, like, the fill, how much will be taken care of there? Will it be put through the, um, what do they call the machine? Processing? Will it be done there? Is it all just going to be true? No, we're not right processing out? on the site. We agreed to that before. Yeah, we won't be doing any processing. The only thing that would, would happen is to be some screen loom for the house slots. I do that on every house lot. They screen loom, but there's not going to be any gravel processing. We're not, we're not setting up a processing plant. Okay. The gravel that comes out of the bank will be the gravel that gets put in the truck. I think that's in the removal plan too. So I'll update that. Yeah, and that'll be in there. I, th I believe it is in there that we won't be doing any processing. Okay, but all those plans were never voted by us and accepted, so. However it turns out, one way or another, but. Phil? Okay, are we go? I'm good, yeah. 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 Um, I have one question. So the, um, one of the discussions was on the slope on the sides of the roads. So did you end up doing two to one or three to one on the? You know, I'm gonna have to go back and look. I can't okay. recall. I think it was two to one. I think it was two to one to, to lessen the amount. Just wanna, 
I believe it was two to one, right? I, I believe it's three to one. Three, three to one. one. And, and I think um, we had talked about that going back and forth, and um, my feeling was even though you allow slopes to go as tight as two to one, the three to one, given the height of the cuts, would be more stable over time. And, and then, you know, I, th I think the, you know, as, as I said before, I mean, the big issue, with, you know, looking at how many loads of, of gravel and the, you know, the whole schedule for removing it off the site, it would be something that the, you know, the board would want to see and make yep. concerns about safety and. We're going to update that. So that, that would be the big thing. Yeah. Yep. That's ready. I, I don't think I have anything new. We've been through this so many times. And, okay. Yeah. John? Although one quick thing, it would be um, it, it, the the, the chart you have here, where you show the the, the current grade and the, the existing one, is that something we have in the? Is that something we could get a copy of too? Absolutely, that would be just very helpful. I would yep, I can submit that to you. Draw Absolutely. The lines. Yep. So since you have the empirical data, that would be very helpful. <laughs> And by the way, it does look like you, you know, you did everything that we I just did, did that for presentation yeah, purposes. Yeah, everything looked to me. But no, I can, I can give you those. Yeah. Absolutely. But everything did look as we agreed upon. Well, so no problem there. Mr. Chairman? Yep. They're three to one. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. John? Um, I think I'd just like to reiterate on Carl's comments concerning the access to the sportsman's club that it be laid out as a road um, so that if it in fact becomes necessary or desired, it's there laid out. Yeah, they don't have to come back and do a taking or anything after the fact. Or well, whoever ends up with lot eight, seven, and eight probably should be laid out such that that provision is there so that any building wouldn't be impacted by a later change. Uh, other than that, I th I'll go along with Phil. We've argued most of this in the past. I don't think the comment for the added coverage on Lot One, as for the as the building goes on, has been accepted already. So I think with the adjustments to the grading of uh, the slopes for the roads, we're probably in decent shape once we get all the comments back from the boards and everything. Thank you. Okay. Um, I've said my piece. So now, so, do you have anything else, Rob, before we open? Okay. Questions or comments from the public? I ask you to come up to the podium, state your name and address for the record, please. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Dave McKay. I'm an attorney at Myra O'Connell in Westboro, and I represent the Walpole Sportsman's Association. Uh, as most of you probably know, the Walpole Sportsman's Association is a nonprofit uh, organization uh, with a 98-acre sporting reserve in Walpole that abuts the proposed project to the north. Um, our only access to the site as it exists right now is along the eastern boundary uh, of the uh, plaintiffs or of the proposed project and um, the board may also be aware that the extent um, of the ownership and the use of that access road uh, is in dispute between uh, the developer and the club um, the project here is a 24 lot subdivision on 28 acres the original project, uh, as it was proposed, uh, and as you are likely aware, included, as I understand it, 470,000 cubic yards of soil removal over a two-year period. <clears throat> there was also, in the prior hearing, some discussions about um, various issues between the club with respect to uh, the uh, property ownership issues and things of that nature, um, the access road and so forth that had not been resolved and those remain unresolved and we think that they need to be resolved as part of the subdivision plan that's now before you on a remand. Most of the deficiencies from our standpoint that were in the original plan remain notwithstanding the changes that have been made. 
first and, and primary among them is the use question. And for our position is that the use of this project, again, notwithstanding the modest changes that have been made with respect to the grading and the gravel removal, but for zoning purposes, the use of this project is a commercial earth removal operation, not a residential subdivision. The um, intent of the developer and the project proponent is not the deciding factor as to what the use is. Uh, the issue and what determines what the use of the project is, is the extent and duration and magnitude of the earth removal operations. As I understand it, the, uh, the amount of earth removal that has been reduced from the project is about 15%. Um, I have not seen, we've only seen the revised plan. It doesn't provide us any specific details about the gravel removal operation, how that's going to work, the quantities and the duration. Um, but if it's 15%, it's still over 400,000 cubic yards, which is probably in the order of magnitude of 20 to 25,000 truck trips that it's going to take over a period of years to remove the gravel um, from this site. And we would suggest, and I think the case law in Massachusetts supports that for use purposes, this is not a residential subdivision. If you're removing that much gravel for the project over that period of time and at that magnitude, um, it is an earth removal operation and that's a uh, commercial or industrial use. There are several cases in Massachusetts that have addressed this issue over the years. I've litigated this issue uh, in other cases. A couple of examples are Henry versus Board of Appeals of Dunstable. Um, that is a 1994 case in which the uh, Supreme Judicial Court held that uh, the removal of 300 to 400,000 cubic yards was a separate impermissible use under the zoning bylaw in Dunstable. In Old Colony Council, Boy Scouts of America versus the Zoning Board of Appeals in Plymouth, uh, the court held that the removal of 460,000 cubic yards for a cranberry bog construction, um, that that amount of soil removal was not incidental to an allowed use. In Indian Head Realty versus the ZBA of Plymouth, uh, the court held, this went to the appeals court, that 475,000 cubic yards of gravel over two to three years was not necessary or incidental and was therefore a separate use from uh, the underlying construction project. The case that I think is instructive on the other end of the scale that shows when, uh, a, when gravel removal can be um, permissible is and when it's incidental to the project is Lowe's Home Centers versus Town of Auburn Planning Board. Now this was a land court decision, didn't go to the appeals court, but in that case the court held that 230,000 cubic yards of removal over a four to five month time period was permissible as site preparation in uh, connection with the proposed uh, retail use. So when you're talking about gravel removal and soil removal over a period of months, that probably passes muster on the use question and is incidental to a residential construction project or in the case of a commercial construction project that can be considered incidental. In this case, you're talking about a lot more. We also have no formal operations plan that shows how this is all going to work and over what time period. Um, and the board should certainly require that. It sounds like the board has asked for that and we agree that that should be provided. We also think that the applicant should be required to post a bond for that work to make sure that it is done uh, properly and we, we, we submit to the board that the subdivision rules and regulations uh, authorize that kind of bonding um, as you would do for the construction of the road and the other improvements. Um, we also submit that the, this project, given the nature and the magnitude of the soil removal, requires an earth, an earth removal special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals, which to my knowledge the applicant has not applied for or obtained. Um, separate and apart from the earth removal aspects of the project, the project also and the plan fails to address the roadway and property rights issues. Um, and this is important and I recognize that in most cases before a planning board, um, planning boards are loath to get involved in property disputes between an applicant and an abutter. 
The difference here is that the applicant is required to submit a covenant that it is the owner in fee absolute of all the land included in the subdivision. And we don't believe that the applicant ma can make that covenant uh, in, this, in this instance. Uh, and the reason for that is on page 11 of the plan, it shows the gravel road um, that is the access road for the Walpole Sportsman's Association traveling through lots seven and eight. So you'll see that spur um, on lot seven and eight of the existing roadway. So that hasn't been addressed in the revised plan. Um, the subdivision also purports to include land north of the gravel road, which is land that uh, is owned by the Sportsman's Association. It's record, the, the record ownership, I would submit uh, and agree, is in the, um, uh, is, is the underlying owner for um, the project proponent. But by adverse possession, we submit that the Walpole Sportsman's Association has been using that land for decades, many decades, going back probably to 1947. Uh, when this property was acquired by the club. There are other areas on lots eight and nine uh, that we believe are also owned by the club um, by adverse possession and none, none of that has been addressed uh, in the plan. There's also been uh, nothing in the plan to address the proximity to existing uh, firing ranges at the club. Uh, and at a minimum, we think that there needs to be a disclosure of that and a reference to that in the deeds. Um, and this is really not only a public safety issue, but a public disclosure issue so that folks who are buying these subdivision lots um, someday in the future when all the gravel is taken out of the site, um, know what it is that is happening uh, nearby. And we further submit that there should really be a buffer from those ranges. There should be a 500 foot buffer between uh, those and, and any house lots. Um, and then the final, final thing that I'll mention uh, quickly is the cul-de-sac um, at the end of Ava Drive, excuse me, Yes, at, at the end of Ava Lane um, shows a 46 foot right of way to um, the club property to the north. And uh, that there, there is no existing easement or right that, that would provide for these property owners to access the golf club, or excuse me, the, um, uh, the club through that location. Um, now, maybe that was something that was the subject of negotiations with the club in the past, but for present purposes, there's no agreement to provide that kind of access at the end of Ava Lane to the club. So it shouldn't be on the plan unless there is some written agreement that would allow for that. So um, obviously we have a number of lingering and remaining issues that we have with the plan that we think ought to be addressed. Um, and we appreciate the board for listening to us and give us, giving us an opportunity to uh, raise some of those issues and we hope that they can be addressed successfully. Okay. Thank you. Before you go, a couple items. Um, I know you don't want the easements up to the gun club, but to me, unless I'm totally wrong, is if they want to put them on a plan, they can, as long as they don't go on yours, right? So that's you're just pointing that out. I'm, I'm pointing out that there's no there's no existing agreement that would allow for that kind you guys of access to the club. It's just going to stop there and, and, and never never work. Um, and now, I guess why you say an adverse possession. So my start of my quote was going to be, but I'm now I know the way you talk about adverse possession. You have no agreements no between you and the developer. Uh, there's no they're not agreeing that you guys have rights or anything. Is that why I get out of this? There, there's no written agreement beyond the historical deeds and access rights that are provided for and documented to some degree in the registry of deeds. So you do, beyond okay. that, there's been no new agreement with the developer for how this is going to work going forward. There is a deed, though, correct? That one last time, and they said there wasn't. So, but if I understand you right, whether you whether you guys come to agreement or not, you can invoke adverse possession. That's which, correct. Which is nothing to do with us. Well, it, no, normally I would agree with that. In this instance, I would say that it is because the subdivision rules and regulations require a covenant from the owner, as I oh, referenced okay. before, 
that they own all of the property shown on the subdivision plan and they, they can't total, make that representation they anymore. have total control i understand okay that's okay all right long story short you guys are still we have issues that remain unresolved mr chairman are you negotiating or are you in litigation or are you is anything going on we're not in litigation right now no okay all right so you can't answer the question here all right then thank you thank you very much okay any questions comments from anybody else from the audience sir I think you had your hand up Good evening, Scott Landry, 605 Lincoln Road. Uh, I addressed the board once before on this issue, and I want to thank the uh, attorney who just spoke. He laid out pretty much what we would be as neighbors concerned about. Uh, my, the real concern and what you had issued uh, or mentioned last time is the excavation, and I was disappointed tonight to come and find out there were no numbers provided uh, it was just mentioned 15%. When you talk the scale of hundreds of thousands of cubic yards of excavation, and then say there's been a change in the grading, and not mention how did that affect the excavation, 15% is minimal. We were talking two years worth of eight to 10 trucks a day. Take 15% off that, and that, that's ridiculous. How, how I would look at it from a simple point of view is if it were to cost them five dollars per cubic yard to remove versus to profit five dollars a cubic yard to remove what would it look like then and i'm not sure it would be the same excavation grade plot plan if every cubic yard actually was a cost instead of a profit base so i urge the board to just look as deeply as possible into the excavation issue uh, it's a public safety there's a million other reasons for it but it just doesn't appear as though your concerns were addressed brought forward in this revision in that we still don't know what are the exact number of cubic yards being removed and there's still no plan presented and we all know that was kind of the main issue on this so thank you for your okay. time. Anybody else questions, comments? Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Jeff Fisher, uh, lifetime resident, um, 5 Alma Road, Precinct 5, also an RTM. Um, also the treasurer on the Walpole Sportsman's Association. Um, I've got two articles. One I want to summarize, January 29, 1923, from the Walpole Times. At a meeting held in the Legion Hall Tuesday evening, the Walpole Sportsman's Association was formed with the conservation of fish and game as its primary objective. That's when we were formed, January 29, 1923. And January 17, 1947, sportsmen purchased new home. The Walpole Sportsman's Association has been fortunate in acquiring through purchase one of the finest clubhouses in the state. Clubhouse, which was formerly a summer home, is situated off Lincoln Road. Acres of excellent woodland and cover surround the main house, which lies adjacent to the Stop River. The area will experience an extensive 1947 sports program. The program includes the restocking of fields, streams, field trials, skeet shooting, and many other outstanding events pertaining to sporting activities. Members of the Norfolk County League and the New England Cover Dog Association, the Walpole Sportsman's Association is destined to be the place in Walpole for outdoor sportsmen. The association of 60 members is a credit to the town. Walpole's woodlands and waters will be made richer through the efforts of these sportsmen, whose game motto is conservation, propagation, but not extermination. I guess my point is, you know, been here almost 100 years. Well, 1947, but it's 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 been a club for 101 years, and that was 60 members back then. We've got 600 members today that are still, you know, st still have the same mission in mind that you know the the, the founders of Walpole Sportsman had. You know, we really feel that this development 
it, it you know, it, it's going to jeopardize, you know, what we've been in existence for for 101 years. Um, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Um, Kim Williams from 11 Deerfield uh, Drive. Um, I actually, a lot of the things that the lawyer had said is some things I wanted to bring up, but uh, I actually have some questions. Um, one is, is that when we went through this process before, we actually had the plans, and I was wondering if they're going to be available to the public so that we can take a look at them. Um, but we had actually gotten a copy of them before our meetings. So that's just a question if that's available. Um, and then the other thing is, is that um, I got a copy of the um, remand order, and in it, it doesn't say why it was sent back. Um, and it did say that um, there, there were going to, that there were supposed to be some amendments um, to the plan when it was resubmitted to the board. Um, and first of all, I don't see that there's been many changes, but I was just wondering if those changes were agreed upon before it came back to, um, to the board. Okay. There was some discussion with the town before um, it was resubmitted. So those are my two questions. Okay. Uh, plans, we have them in the office. I don't know. Well, we can get a copy, you think? Or? Yeah, can we yeah. post them online? Um, we have, we have I think that's how we got them, was online. <coughs> we can talk to Patrick and do see you, if we can do that. That's do it. you have a computer at home? What's that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. An email? Yeah. We'll send them to you in a PDF. Oh, great. And you okay. can just look. Anybody else wants it to send in there and we just send them to you. Okay. That's great. good. In regards to what happened, mm -hmm. the biggest uh, reason for denial was the fact that the slopes here exceeded, well exceeded what you can have uh, for slopes. Basically, it was flattening out, and that allowed them to remove more gravel than we felt needed. Right. So, if, you know, a two to one, I mean, a, a three or four to one slope is a lot less, a lot more goes out than our standard, what we have in our uh, rules and regs. Now, are they exactly what's in our rules and regs? Now, they're probably a little bit more liberal only because of the material itself. So if you, if you say if our rules and regs said two to one, this stuff won't hold up, so you had to allow a little bit. And that was agreement. We had, we went through an arbitration that really didn't go anywhere, and then we had the meetings and we hired Mr. Gemma here, and he was our consultant for this to see where we could come at to make it, to, they have a right to do something, and we're just trying to limit to what's in reason within our rules and regs to, to knock the whole thing is knock the gravel down to something that was would meet our rules and regs, and that's what was done. So that's ba that's the only real thing that was done, and when it got amended back, so basically the judge says, okay, you guys all set with this, yeah. So okay, you know we were told you don't necessarily have to agree to it, but it'd be kind of stupid because you've already said on this path. But as far as everything else, ways explain. Everything else is square one again. Okay. Yeah, I was just thinking that the Symphony Park, um, which you know was developed a long time ago, but that is quite hilly, and I didn't know if there's any possibility of looking at those plans um, to see if we could do a similar thing. Because I, me personally, I don't have any problem with houses there. It's just the leveling of the whole, you know, all the terrain and everything. It just seems ridiculous, to, and it seems like a business. Well. You gotta understand. It's a two-part process, and one of them is in the subdivision rules and regs. They allow you to construct these. We were presented with some other cases here. You heard before by the gun club's attorney. I don't know necessarily that. The one that's coming after that they want to do is they want to take all the house lots and knock them down. That's where the big gravel. They want to take what? They're gonna knock all the. Right now, it may be like this. Mm-hmm. Your house is going to be way up here, uh -huh. and they're going to. They've already said to us, "No, we can't do that. We got to. We got to take out enough stuff so we can build on it." Right, but so they could take the gravel as well. Yeah, but that process has already been deemed by town council a while ago to us, and and it differs from a, uh, a ruling they got from the previous building commissioner. But it's that has to go as a special permit. So, just imagine a road like the Red Sea. Yeah. 
All right, that's what it looked like when they do it. But when they want to build the houses, the Red Sea is going to kind of come down like this for each individual lot. Yep. That's the next step in the process. Yeah. I mean, I just think I, I go through Symphony Park and I just know all those houses are up high, you know, and the At Symphony are Park? Good. Symphony Park, yeah. Well, that's what I said before. And the reason is, what's that stuff? Rock. Oh, yeah. No, I'm sorry. What I'm saying. Rock there, rock here. This was ledge. They wouldn't be touching it. Yeah. Because yeah. there's no money to blast and and make stone it just isn't uh worthwhile this really nice it's an esca which is glacial till stuff and it's nice stuff that's what makes this valuable right it's a septic sand yes right okay thank you for your time yep okay anybody else how are you doing uh my name's michael Lydon. i'm a resident at 522 lincoln road directly across from uh proposed lot one I uh, just want to reiterate my concerns with the gravel removal operation uh, you know starting a young family my wife and I uh, going to be within 50 feet of lots of trucks and you know sand that's a little bit concerning I would also ask the board to keep in mind that in my backyard uh, across from the train tracks on West Street the MF landscaping uh, facility has been put in so there's already quite a bit of noise pollution as it is. If we were to take down all these hills and clear the land, those hills, in my opinion, are currently providing nice sound insulation from the gun club. Personally, I was worried to buy my house being so close to the gun club, but I was pleasantly surprised to hear that the noise really isn't that bad. I contend that if the hill were taken down, the sound would be a lot worse in that area. Uh, really just wanna you know, ask the board to consider the neighborhood consider the town truthfully I, I wonder what the demand is for 24 units within 100 feet of a gun club there's also currently new houses being developed on the immediately adjacent lots down on Lincoln Road uh, I, I think the neighborhood has new housing available I, I think this is you know a bit excessive so thank you board for your time appreciate it okay just so you understand that there uh, they did propose they call it the berm on the back lot for the gun so you won't hear the guns if you're on that street and i don't know if you've seen that yeah i i, I did so that's appreciated that i, I you guys uh were, well, were keeping it, it keeping it you know 100 percent. that that was nice right um it still it but you know i i imagine like a handful of lots rather than 24 right yeah, but for the reason my personal view why that's there someone may try to hit me for it but that's so they can sell the houses because if it was flat yep <laughs> unless you're a gun advocate yeah. you wouldn't like it well I, I i wouldn't classify myself as a gun advocate I, I haven't gone over to introduce myself to the guys yet but maybe one day but that's all i had thank you guys for the time appreciate okay. it thank you anyone else ma'am finally from lincoln road as well um you mentioned that there was a new proposed grade for the roads what is that i think they were going down to half percent before you know what the new grade is? Uh, you answer that, Carl? Or? On Parsons, it's 5%, so yep. that's the max, okay? Yep. So they come from the, uh, Deerfield goes up at its maximum grade from the intersection of Parsons. There's a vertical curve that gradually goes up, and then that goes, the 5% is the maximum allowable grade under the rules of rates. So was that change, wasn't it 7% uh, in your zoning? Uh, yeah, seven percent, right? Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, it's seven. Seven percent. Yeah. Sorry. So is the reason why we're not? They're not at seven percent. They're, they're at seven percent going off Deerfield. Field. Going up that first. So they, they're, they're Rob, within the. Uh, Rob, can you chime in on that? Yeah, you guys within whatever. Yeah, the, 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 the slope from Deerfield is seven. Oh, sorry. So I misspoke. Yeah. Exactly. So it's at maximum. Yeah. It's at maximum to get up. It's at maximum under the rules. On of something. Rent. Okay. Yeah. Um. And there was also an issue about sidewalks on Lincoln. Um, that was also something, and that was uh, that might have impacted some of the plans because they hadn't factored in that five-foot uh, area between the road. So that's something else that I'd like to see uh, updated on the plans as well because I don't see that reflected. Um, the gravel removal plan, I think just to reiterate what everyone's been saying, that is our, our biggest concern. We recognize that there's going to be growth and development um, 
I would like to point out, though, that the, the house that's been built there has been on the market for over a year and hasn't sold. So if you're thinking of putting in 24 lots, that is something that just financially I would suggest that you guys take that into consideration if it really is about um, selling lots. Um, but definitely seeing that gravel removal plan before it was actually not a two-year plan, it was a 2.7-year plan. It's almost three years. And it was 80 trucks a day going down this area, 40 trucks but with me coming in and coming out um, between the hours of 7 to 3, and that was just unacceptable. And, and where was that? It, their, their original gravel removal oh, plan oh, was, was, original plan. yeah, it was yeah, 80 yeah. trucks a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. That was, yeah. it was excessive. Um, but, so that's good, really important. I just want to reiterate that. We really want to make sure that they make some improvements on that gravel removal plan, sidewalks on Lincoln, um, and, uh, and I, actually you mentioned you were talking about that they're going to be going into grade lot the house lots later that's yeah it's not us but yeah okay so um just so i understand then is there a, who regulates that because would it be possible that we could maybe put something in place that they can't grade the lot until it's sold so that that way we're not just grading housing lots oh. for a hypothetical sale i'll tell you the big elephant in the room we have our opinion backed up by town council that says they have to go for a special permit Okay, so it would have to be on each individual lot. You can't do it as one blanket because you have to show, say you want a hill and I want to bring it down. You gotta show, I can't get my septic here, I can't get my driveway, how can I, I gotta grade it down. So that's individual. You just can't go blanket, I gotta do them all. So at least in my opinion, they have to go in front of the zoning board and go house by house by house. Now they, they have their own opinion from a previous Building inspector, to me, I'd rather take the town council than him. Says you don't need a special permit at all, and that was one of the things we talked about. Because that, if they take it down and they say they can right. do it, right? Once it's they, down, it's we, down. We, and they don't what, sell. we wasted our time for the last couple of years. Right. Here. So, yeah. but so I, I guess I'm still a little confused. If, if are you saying then that for each lot, or 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 that's in contention right now, how those house lots will be? Okay, so who, who would we be talking to to make sure that is also? That would have to be filed with the zoning board. That's gonna be a battle down the road, but my opinion, based upon the gravel move, if they say it's to build a house, then you would have to show the exact house, the exact location, and exactly what you're putting there, and that has to be <clears throat> built like that. You just can't say, we kinda of wanna do this. So it's no different than an individual house owner. Where is it on the lot? So that's a... That's a lot of work, and it has to be. So they're going to prove they would approve it lot by lot by lot, not just blanket. We're going to cut it all down like this. So uh, who's per I guess I'm getting Sony is board. that in your purview to, to say board. that they need to do that, or well, when it, you know when I'm going to assume there's going to be maybe there's be, I'm hoping there'll be some type of compromise or something that, um, or if there is a compromise, is that something that can be uh, in the approval say that they need to make sure that these get approved in this manner? We had it so in there before, and that was talked about. But we can't encumber, I guess that's the term, another board. Okay. We can only make recommendations, that's all. So that it alerts people to this potential. Okay, is it worth getting the zoning board's opinion on that? They won't give opinions. <laughs> okay, because <laughs> that, having that resolve would be helpful because if, if, mo if I'm hearing you correctly, most of the, the remaining gravel removal will be happening for the lots themselves, not the roadways. Correct. So we, that really does need to be addressed at the same time time given all of our concerns around the gravel removal plan so how does that happen they've chose to go down this road to me I probably would have done them together so that we have a balance because if one says you can go this low and one says you can't you have a lot you may not be able to use or you're going to you have to you have a mountain bike to get up there so um, but that like now it's out of our hands we got to deal with what's in front of us Okay. David McKay again for the Walpole Sportsman's Association. I, I would urge the board to require the applicant to show you the entire plan of all the grading and all the filling that they intend to do for this project. I am not aware of any case that splits up the analysis, the use analysis for a for earth removal operations that looks first at the road and then separately and independently for each of the house lots that are planned as part of the subdivision. It sounds like this is a bit of a bait and switch on the board 
to try and make it appear that there's actually less gravel removal being removed. I think this board is entitled under the subdivision rules and regulations to know what this project is actually going to look like and what the lots are going to look like when they are prepared to build houses on them. The, and, 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 and the, the, the magnitude, and, and I think the public is entitled to know, the full magnitude of the gravel removal operations that are going to be necessary and incidental for this project. The analysis is not necessary and incidental to the building of a road. The analysis is necessary and incidental to the construction of the residential subdivision, and that includes the lots. So I don't think it's legally permissible for an applicant to come to the board and suggest that its use is a residential subdivision when they haven't fully disclosed the full scope of the gravel removal that they intend to do. So I would urge the board to require that the plan actually be the plan of what they intend to build for the homes and not just for the road. Okay, before you go is, uh, I assume you're familiar with our uh, rule book and on the zoning, it's 150 yards in the route. So that's kind of where it comes from. That's what we've been working with. Um, putting it all in it. My own opinion, we'll get our own opinion from our, our legal people, but what you said makes sense to me, just shooting from my hip is what you say made sense. Can we bound them by it? No, but I see what you're saying is this is a project and for the public good what is it going to look like at the end and how much is actually coming out that's what if I understand but I thought we we actually they, they actually first came to us with the whole the whole plan and then we asked them to split it out no it but us, no but Phil they came doing that oh no no we no. weren't going to take action on their plan because that that gravel that they wanted out of there for the houses didn't affect us they were coming to us for the road but they wanted us to give them a cot blank for all the lots. I don't believe we can because we can't go beyond the 46 feet. We stop right there, pretty much. But the, but the first plan was for all the removal of all the gravel but for they all want, the house lots. Yeah, they wanted, yeah. but we didn't have the, as I told them, that we don't have the approval process for that beyond. What I'm saying now is that maybe we should see what their plan is because we can't bind them to it, what's going on on a lot, only because we're subdivision control, we're not zoning. And we, we rule from, what is it, 46 feet to 46 feet within the road. But what says made sense, so, yeah, that's maybe would be a good idea, is, but it wouldn't be binding. How's that? I agree with what you said, Phil, but it's not binding. Yeah. It gives us an idea. I get, my own view is I think the board's jurisdiction in a residential subdivision under the rules and regulations is broader than that. You're not just looking at the, at the 46 feet where the road is located. You're looking at creating a subdivision that works with the topography and that creates a livable subdivision for the people that are going to have to live in these houses someday. Okay. And what you're seeing is only part of the story. They're also going to need, in my view, a, an earth removal special permit from the zoning board. So I think there's some overlapping jurisdiction here. But in terms of the subdivision analysis itself, I would urge the board to require the applicant to provide the full plan that shows all of the earth removal that they intend to do for the project and that this board has an opportunity to look at the elevations that are proposed, the, the ultimate elevations that are going to be proposed for uh, each of the homes in the subdivision. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions, comments? Okay. Um, Mr. Ark, you got anything? All right. So let me get, it. might as well hit, the, hit it nail on the head here. What do you, you intend to do anything else beyond what we talk, these plans? Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna address town engineer's comments. We're gonna provide you with an updated gravel removal plan, and pretty much. Wait, we already have an order of conditions. We have a uh, land disturbance permit from conservation. Those are already approved. We've got water and sewer. We're waiting on board of health. We're gonna make sure the fire department's happy with what they have. We'll give them a turning radius plan and 
we'll resubmit to you. Okay. But your gravel removal is going to reflect the new plan and everything, right. and you're going to give us cuts and fills, and you're going to give us durations and where this is timeline. all happening? Timeline. Yes. Needs to be a timeline in there. We'll give you a timeline. Yeah, the number of trucks per day, what we anticipate, how long it will take. And you're going to start year. how long it's going to take you. Correct. And also, typical CMP that you see in Boston, it's going to have to, you're going to have to have a wheel wash or something to that effect. That's going to be yeah. there. We are going to do all this operation. We have that on the plan. It's on this plan? We had also talked Where is it? Yeah, there's a uh, erosion control plan in there that shows we're going to pave the first portion of the road. Okay, but how about all of them? Cause we, let's face it, you're going to be cutting trees down, you're going to have to get rid of those. We have a stage, that's the area on lot one and two, that's the staging area. But I thought we got rid of it on lot one. Only on the front part. We're still, so you're gonna actually, I'm sorry, we're on lot two and three now. Well, in my view, I need to know as it's you're digging, your set. as you're digging, where are you going to set up? Are you going to screen on site? We're not going to do processing. We're only going to screen loom. So just loom. Okay, that needs to be stated. Is it stated it's already? The, it's in the gravel removal. It'll it's be on this there. plan? The erosion control plan is on the plan. We show the staging areas where the trucks will park but and all that. But does it say that you're only going to yes. screen the... It says on here you're only going to screen the gravel. We, have a st I we mean call it a staging the, area. So that's that doesn't tell me is. anything is you screen in the loam that needs all, everything so that we don't have any issues down the Correct. road I'll, I'll make sure that's on there for you and dust control yeah, and all all that when I looked in my old notes too there was something about um, street cleaning correct that's in there okay. now, I think it's almost it will be pretty much daily now, in regards to one of the comments brought up by the other attorney, and it talks about a covenant, you have to show you own it all. Are you guys prepared to do that? Uh, we are, Mr. Chair. Um, if the if the club believes that they have a right to adverse possession, they, that's a private property dispute, but it doesn't impact our title ownership as a matter of record currently. So we yeah, but there is a um, what as we call it, floating easement, right? you recognize that at all again I don't want to rehash the whole conversation previously with respect to um, the the easement and the permissible use of the property over a number of years um, but again I we're making the representation required in the covenant so can we have some to the effect that there is no encumbrance by anybody and that doesn't exist I think that's what we're doing by agreeing to the covenant Agreement. The covenant referring to the fact that we have the the right to use the property that's shown on the plan. Yeah, you got the right to use it, but you control it all. That needs to be. I, I think that's again part of part of what what the covenant means that we're agreeing to that. Okay. Um, since you already did it before, Rob, you should be able to whip out the additional. We get two on your gravel removal. One, at least my view, unless it changes. I'm only one here. This is what you're doing for the road. And what? And this is what you anticipate for the houses. We've already done that. You want to go backwards in time here? I mean, we gave you a plan of the entire site being developed and graded. You told us not to submit it. You told us to take it off the plan and grade it to the road, and that's what we did. Now you want me to go back and show you what we already showed you once before. That it, you want to go back to what we already did. I, want to, I would like to see the amount of gravel removed. It's, no? I'm, I think I, I don't think that's fair to even ask us that at this point. You have that in your file. This is unbelievable. I can't ask anything. You guys are controlling. I already did it. You're asking me to do something I already did once, and you told me not to do it. No, and now you're telling me to do it. No, I said as a aside so everybody knows. You have it in your files. Do we have you? How you're going to remove that, and how you might approach that, no, just so they don't. You, took, you made us take it off right, the I plan. It's not okay. part of your purview. You already told us that. We gave you a plan, and Phil, you said Wait, it. No, that, I, that was my memory. We gave you a okay. plan with all the house lots graded, the entire site showing an earth berm with vegetation, with planting, a fence, etc. And you said no. Okay. This is not all what right. we want to see. You need to take this off okay. the plan. We want to see the grading okay. for the road. All right. So all right. you're asking me to go back and go right back where I was. 
tell you what, this weekend I'll take your new plan with the new grades and then interpolate what you have because what you did before isn't anything that's going to reflect on this. Correct? <laughs> yes or no? No. Your grades before are not going to work with the new grades because it's all different. Not, I'm know. not going back there. Not going back. I just love the cooperation. Then how do you explain? Love it? the cooperation. I do. You submitted this plan with new grades that we agreed to. We've changed that profile. Right. If you, you want to go road. back to what you say, what you did before, you're never going back again. But that plan, you, if you want to go back to, if I look at the road, it's not the same grade. It's not part of your jurisdiction. You already told me that. Why am I going to do it again? You made me take it off the plan. We will seek our. We'll get opinions when we get there. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to throw this one out. We never agreed to go left. You're going right. That's what we said. I don't know what you mean, left or right. When we leave the site, because that's what you kind of put in your little appeal. That we already agreed as a board that the only way you're going out of here is go right to Norfolk, not left up by the League of. I don't, I don't remember what we agreed to on that. You don't remember that? I don't. Gee. Remember everything else but that. Mr. Chairman, we, did, we didn't agree to that. We said we would make an effort. Do we, we'll, 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 it's not whether you agreed or not. It's up to this board to make that condition. We never said we'd send every truck to Norfolk. Never. We never. I love this cooperation. All right, fine. Do what you guys think, okay? We'll come back with what we need and what, we, what you need. So, but. I will read one of the things it, right in the amended plan. Uh, what do you call it? But maybe I'm stupid and I can't read this stuff. But it says uh, the board shall hold a public hearing in accordance with General Laws 4181T and the requirements of the board's subdivision rules and rights. So basically, they told us to go back and redo this except for what we agreed on the amendment. So that's what I see. So everything else? And the other thing, Rob, think about it is. So we want to change something from three years ago if fire department, zoning, you're not grandfathered on that. You'd have to go back and do it, right? So, all right. I don't have any other comments. Anyone else up here? No? Yeah, so so um, I, I would like to ask our town council, maybe not here, but maybe through a, another meeting, <coughs> some of the questions on the legalities of, that were brought up. If that's appropriate. Well, what we um, can do, each of us can, what you think you need, can't do it outside, but and we can forward it to them, a list of it, and that will, whatever you ask, will be answered at the next meeting. Okay. All right. Yeah. That we can, very, we very don't want to belabor everybody here. But that would be very helpful for me. Yeah, and we'll just, you know, if you have a question, it's no different than asking the attorney and no different than asking Kyle, what about this, what about this, what about this, and anything that's asked and anything that's answered will be brought back. Okay, Rob? <coughs> All right. All right. Um, so when are we expiring on this? Well, we have to give an update by, by April 9th. Are we good? Sure. All we got to do is tell the court this is ongoing. We opened on us tonight. What? Who does that? Us or attorney? We do, it said. Unless the applicant gives an extension. Unless it's agreed to. And when are we when are we done on this, Kate? I, I didn't. I don't know that one. I don't know the answer to that. It was filed January twenty seventh. It was filed. It was, it was a motion to clarify filed by the court on, on January twenty fifth. The court issued the January twenty fifth, then the remand application uh, was refiled uh, and stamped by um, with the office on January thirty first. Just 90 days, uh, I'm assuming that's going to be the end of May. The end of, uh, the end of April. The end of April. The end of April. Would be the March. 90th day. February, March, April. Yeah, okay. All right, so when when's our next? Um, April 4th. Okay. Or 
for April 18th. April 4th? Is that two weeks? Oh, that's not two weeks, is it? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's two weeks. For oh, April 18th. For April 18th. You're not going to give us enough time to get things. You want two weeks? Yeah. So I'd, <laughs> I'd have to submit it today. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so if we go April, tell me you're not going to submit anything. So you I think we should go April 18th. <laughs> All right. Just, I'm looking at you guys just before we do it to make sure, because I'm always about being nice, is to make oh. sure you guys are around. You know, I know you're a world traveler. I'm gone on the 4th. No. <laughs> 18th, the whole team? 18th. You guys are all time. All right. What time, Kate? 710. 710? Okay, we'll, we'll continue to 710 on April 18th, and uh, if any questions that come up by us or whatever, we'll send them to you. And anything you've heard tonight, when you come the next time, you can have answers for us, too. Okay. Um, and everything, that, like I said, you don't have to do a Freedom of Information Act like one of the other clients. We will give you everything. April 18th. Am I going to get a smile out of you tonight? There we go. All right, April 18th, continue. Thank you. Anybody has any questions? Just follow procedure. Send them, send them the key. Yeah, because because I don't need yeah. you send the same yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. We're not going to run the so yeah. we, and we can just cross out what's yeah. written. I'm just confused. Yeah. 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 Everything's new. Everything's da da da. There's nothing you can do before. Oh, now you got your happy face on. See you, Rob. See you, Bob. Um, but like this whole this whole baloney. He's not going to submit. So if he doesn't submit, no. Yeah. He has to read this <coughs> because it's all changed. He thinks he does. Well, we'll get some of the questions in from Mr. Uh, Lane. Uh, let's see. Did I give you my I stuff back? Say no. No. Hey, there is there is something that was a plus tonight. Oh. I can't see that. <laughs> Why can't you? Let me give you to Tom huh? I'll give it to Tommy before you leave. Yeah, I'll go for it, Grandma. All right, I'll sort that for you. Yes, you do. Oh, how much fun. What is he doing here? Katie, thank you, really. What was he holding up, Katie? <laughs> <laughs> there isn't enough chocolate in the world to get me through these meetings. <laughs> what what was he batting up on this? They're really good. They're thin. Yes, I do. I want two, though. <laughs> yes. You can have all of them. He, he, what was he holding up? So, um... Where are the comments from the I have woods? no idea what he was doing. Um, okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Where is it? I don't what do know. What did he do with it? I don't know what he was doing. I do. So. You know the cards I checked? Mm -hmm. I know. And that, and that he... Yeah. That I could take it up. I knew that, but I couldn't stop it. Yeah. No, no, you no, can't No, I didn't want to stop no. it. No. Do, do you know what I mean? It was huh? like, I knew. Yeah, I wasn't really thinking about it. And it was funny. Point. That's and really they some... They know if they're supposed to <coughs> show it's a big into the West Street, into the... Yeah, sure Norfolk Street, or if I'm showing it going out. I'll just exactly keep eating my chocolate. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> These are my favorite. These are better because they're thin. Then I got thinking. I don't care. I, just, I, 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 I buy them because kids don't like them. Yeah. <laughs> but not that easy oh. with a car. I wouldn't worry about it, John. No. Because if they don't go yeah. West Street, they're going to go Main Street. 
Okay, let's get the show on the road here. Yeah, I'd assume everything's coming. My sweatpants. Yeah, I honestly don't know the you know, height of the tower. This is what happens when we don't meet. I, I know one thing. No, no. <coughs> it's very hard. Mm -hmm. I'm on the air. <laughs> All the mics are still live. to get this meeting back so <laughs> all right I need a gavel <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you <laughs> the text I'm getting <laughs> Let's go. We're still on TV, yes. Get up here. Come on. Hurry up. Let's go. We're live. Get going. Come on, let's go. Come on. I got a curfew. <laughs> I'm old. Katie. Okay. Thank I'm you, Katie. I'll do the yep. I'm in charge. Yep. This is Katie. <laughs> Kitty who wears high heels to march in a parade. Stop. Jesus, Mary, I've never seen anything like it. Okay. It, was, it was unbelievable. I looked, I was like, I'm like, well, I didn't see you until you walked all the way down there, and I was like, what? Oh, you want the whole parade in them? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. High heels. Not low heels. Not flats. Not sneakers. High heels. Yeah, wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. Everyone has to dress up once in a while. Yeah, she does. Yeah, hold on. She's a good girl. Oh, she is. Yep. One of the best. Please. Let me see. Mm. Uh, is it fun, Kate? You know what? We gave a lot of money away to a lot of good. Yeah, we did. Oh, that's perfect. It, it was. It was. It felt good. And it also will help us to keep doing it all year long. So that's it was nice. a good day. Oh, here we go. Just <laughs> take over. Show it how you rich. Oh, yeah. Richie? Yeah. No. Right, the hills. What's the matter? You're not going to look? What? Oh, I don't. Yeah. No, I don't Matching it. hills, I guess. Not, not. It's, a, it's a new thing. All right. <laughs> look at it. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. do we have an A&R? Oh, no, wait. It's going to be continued. Continued? Okay. All right. Council behalf of Michael Freiberger, we respectfully request the board extend the time for the A&R okay. up to May 31st, 2024. An A and I, we already have in our possession, so it's an extension of time. I'd like to continue it to May 16th. Well, we take it when we get it, but right, we don't set time certain for A and I. We already have it, we just need an extension. Through yeah, I got that. Yeah, so I make a motion to allow it May 31st. Do I have a second? Second, second. second. All those in favor, aye. All, right. aye. all right, and what we have now may change, right, Kate? Um, it may, but they would they have asked to go on May 16th. So. Okay. Uh, let's knock out the easy ones. Uh, tree warden. I don't know if you guys saw it. I, he actually stopped. Um, more came in on that, Jack. Um. Well, Jim Thomas was concerned when I saw him Friday about this. I know. I mean, it he had a couple more, and, and actually, the yeah. pictures are really okay. 
Uh, good morning, Kate. High Street in Dover, the large ash tree came down and limbs have fallen on the road. Then it was knocking out power. So they've taken that one out at the corner of High Street in Dover. And got a picture. And at 320 High Street, uh, tree has come down. And they've got never so it's going to take it down because it's next to the wires because that's fallen down. And I think all of these, yeah, they're all on either North Street. This one's on North Street. And they got to take these branches down on North Street because they were leaning on the wires. So everything Jim has sent us, another one, 263 High Street, same thing again. So he's, Jim's notifying us as the, whoa, one more. Another one on North Street. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, tough winter. So what he's done is, even though it's on a scenic road, they have the right to take them down so that protect your pictures attached. Jeff. Property. Or, does anybody want to see the pictures? Or, no. Can we just do a blanket approval? Or he's just notifying us. Just it's notifying done. Us. So yeah, I, you can't say no. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. So he just wanted to make sure he's covered, no. which is good. Yeah. All right. Uh, can't say no. Next item. <laughs> zoning rewrite committee to ask for volunteers. I heard Paul want to jump all over that last time. Paul. 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 Oh, Paul said I want to be on that. Didn't you say that, Paul? It wasn't me. No, you said it to me one day. I did? Yeah, I was coming at Tommy Brady's office. Oh, the zoning bylaw? Rewrite committee? Yeah, well, you had mentioned to me. Oh, I yeah. I Well, I, no, I mentioned that, yeah. Maybe a, I, th I think the zoning how many should be considered. How many people are they looking for? It's a, they did. Okay, do we have a? They, it's going to go until June of 2025. That's a big commitment. Yeah. Nope. All right, they got to go. By the way, that was, that was one of the recommendations of the master plan, was to do the, the zoning rewrite. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll offer to be on it if no one else wants to be. But I want to see how many they need. If Paul wants to be on it, then I should. Yeah, they didn't limit, I don't think. Yeah. Oh, you guys get 65 grand if you're on it. <laughs> yeah. That's right. what it. The Department sure. of Community Economic Del Development, you got a grant for $65,000. Uh, they want a steering committee, so with KP. So who wants to be on it? Phil, you said? I, I would defer to Paul if he was. No, no, I, it was, it, I think it was misunderstanding, Phil. I, I, do we know the period of time involved and how often they'll be? They don't. They haven't said that. They're just getting it together. June of 2025. I mean, we can put more than one on. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you're going to have Patrick Duchesne. You're going to have KP Law. You're going to have um, Jim Crowley. It, it won't be a lot of meetings. It's more just giving some guidance. As, as yeah, I wouldn't mind. Okay. So. All right. Is that uh, Phil and John? Okay. Yeah. We'll notify. Anybody have any issues? If not, we don't need to vote John because he's a volunteer. So let them know that John and Phil. Do we like need to a vote or no? No, not really. I mean, when they're coming from us. Okay. Uh, unless they want to vote, but okay. Do you want the other one back? Do you want the draft back? No. All right. Um, so what's going on with the West End? That was on the original, but no, oh, it's not on it. This message. No, Never mind. That, that's what's that next week? It's the fourth. Okay. All right. Now, master plan changes. I understand that we just got some late ones, so no one's had it. We're not 100 percent. Who's missing? Just Paul and John. Do you have I'm anything? Missing. I haven't gotten. All right. And if you get them in, and Paul. And once you two get them in, yeah. then I'll, we'll have Kate send them out so we can okay. all look at them ahead of time and then do it the next time. Jack, without getting into any great length, is that my feeling is I didn't want to comment on the existing. I would like to just make a recommendation. So I just make my recommendation. Yeah, whatever okay. you want. Yeah. It's okay, fair enough. Whatever okay. anybody I, thinks, I just know. Yep. whether you want to talk about it's spelled wrong or you think yep. it should have gone, whatever. That's okay. all. So we all have it. So it's a representative of all five of us. All right. They'll put on the fourth agenda. Yeah, okay. yeah. John, you can have yours by the fourth, correct? Yeah, I will. Make okay. An All right. Mm -hmm. And I think anything else? I think that does it. And I just have one thing I wanted to mention, if I could. Yeah. Okay. Just want to let people know that I will not be at the 
the third Thursday in May, because uh, I'm, I'm away most of May for a family, a family uh, event. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a hearing that night, okay? Um, so far, we only have the Freiburger A and R. Okay, so that's the about third, the third Thursday the of yeah. The so that's the only one we got. So yeah. And then no call on the second night. <clears throat> really? Can we make that like for the eighteenth? Alsarabia states is on there, but Kyle will have some stuff on. So we'll okay. All right. I don't see anything else. Again. Uh, anybody else have any questions, comments? Yeah. They don't. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. No second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed.